This video is about debt sizing and debt sculpting in a project finance model. So uh, if you look at the um, term sheet, uh, you will find the limits of uh, how much debt can be raised in a project finance deal, right? Because for example, when a sponsor goes to a lender and presents its uh, construction budget, its total project cost, let's say 10 million, uh, the lender will review the um, proposal, review and audit and understand, you know, the project, the total project cost, and then will decide, first of all, whether it wants to engage in that project. And then the second question is, how much does the lender want to invest in the project? So in the term sheet, in the loan agreement, these limits of the sizing of the debt is mentioned and is an output of the financial model. So in this example here that you see that I extracted for you from a real term sheet, it says that the base case financial model, so this is inside in the term sheet, in the loan agreement, and the reference is to the financial model. The base case financial model in the form and substance acceptable to the senior lender and demonstrating a, a projected DSCR for each calculation period of not less than 1.30. Okay, so this reference to P99 was because this is was from a renewable project. So anyways, the first, therefore, limit for sizing the debt is the minimum DSCR. And we're going to go to the Excel file and see what it means. Then the second limit is until the project financial completion date, a maximum debt to equity ratio of 75-25. So they want to man maintain up to this date, which is the project financial completion date, which is different from commercial operation date. So the lenders, they require a 75 to 25 debt to equity ratio. Okay, so these are the two terms that are imposed by lenders to the sponsors in terms of how much debt can be raised, okay? So now the financial model should take these numbers as inputs, the minimum DSCR of 1.3, the, the um, debt to equity ratio, debt to capital ratio of 75-25. This should be an input to the model and should be used to um, understand how much debt can be raised. But before we dive into Excel, let's just understand a little bit more these terms in the loan agreement. Why do the lenders impose the minimum DSCR for debt sizing? The reason is the lenders, they want to have some protection for fluctuation in the future cash flow. They want to make sure that, you know, even in the worst case or down case scenarios, the project can repay the debt. So they require a cash buffer in the cash flow so that in, in case of unexpected event, the project can still repay the loan. So I mentioned the uh, term cash buffer. Let's see from this um, definition of DSCR, can we understand what is the cash buffer in required you know, by lenders? by imposing this 1.3. So what is, in terms of cash flow, what is the extra cash that the lenders require? Can we translate this 1.3 to this definition of cash buffer? To do that, first, let's look at the equations. DSCR, by definition, is the ratio of cash flow available for debt service divided by debt service. And debt service is nothing but uh, principal plus interest. Then in this case, we take the um, re ratio required by lenders of 1.3 and we plug it into the DSCR definition equation. Uh, and uh, if we rearrange it, so we understand that CFA DS is equal to 1.3 DS. So this is telling us this 
1.3, meaning that the lenders at each repayment date, they want to make sure that there is a 30% of that service, you know, additional in the cash accounts in case things go wrong. So that 30% is a percentage of that service. It is, it is a good information, but it's much better if we can express it in terms of cash buffer. So by cash buffer, cash buffer is the difference between CFADS minus our debt service. So if I want to um, express this cash buffer in percentages, then I have to divide the equation both sides by CFADS. Then it's going to give me the cash buffer in percentages. So now let's just plug in this formula here, CFADS equal to 1.3, that service, into this side of the equation. And uh, so now by rearranging, you know, not rearranging, but, you know, 1.3, that service minus that service is going to give us 0 0.3 divided by 1.3 and the both debt service will cancel each other. So basically the cash buffer is 0 0.3 divided by 1.3, which is around 23%, which is a very good information. So this means that the lenders, they require a 23% cash buffer. And when they read this 1.3 in their mind, they say that, okay, the cash flow can go down by 23% and we are still okay, you know, in terms of the repayment, if we understand, if it's, it's uh, basically saying that by how much can the cash flow go down before we have any issues and problems in the project, okay? So now let's come and do it in Excel. If I apply my formula now, I will show you a couple of examples. For example, target DSCR of 1.3. So by just following that same logic, the cash buffer is nothing but this target minus one divided by the target, okay, which is our 23%. So if the, pro the lenders, they are, you know, they find the project less riskier, they might go with the minimum DSCR of 1.25. This means that they require only 20% buffer in the cash. If they find the project more riskier, like, you know, sometimes, uh, which is the case for mining project, they require a minimum of 1.5. This means that they require an almost 33% cash buffer. So I hope now you understand better, you know, this term of uh, imposing the minimum DSCR. When it comes to the second limit imposed by lenders, which is the gearing, the reason the, the lenders impose this uh, limit is because they want to make sure that the, the sponsors are also providing some equity, some financial contribution in the construction budget. So it's not only 100% debt financing. They don't like that because they want to make sure that the uh, sponsors are also engaged financially in the project. They also have something to lose. So that's basically the skin in the game that the lenders, they want the sponsors to have. And they express it here and they impose it by imposing this gearing ratio of 75-25. Okay, now let's look at this concept with a practical example. We have a semi-annual model. As you can see here from this graphic, we have a almost flat cash flow and we have a total project cost of uh, around one mil 10 million, 10 million of capex that we want to size the debt. So just for the uh, sake of simplicity, I did not include any taxes or any f financing cost in the budget uh, in order to avoid any circular reference. So we take this total project cost of 10 million and given these um, limits that we saw in the term sheet, we have a maximum debt to capital ratio of 75% and we have another limit, which is the minimum DSCR of 1.3. Now the question is, given this cash flow profile that you see here with the, with this price, what is the limit for the debt sizing? Is it the gearing that is limiting our debt sizing or is it the minimum DSCR? 
So if I go to my sources and uses of funds, I see that if I want to size my debt based on the limit of debt to capital ratio, I can raise up to 7.5 million of debt. However, looking at the future cash flow and limiting the debt sizing to a minimum DSCR of 1.3, I can only raise 6.3 million. So in this scenario and given this, uh, profile, what is limiting my debt is going to be the minimum DSCR. So given that you see here that I'm going to size my debt. So now I have this 6.3 million, which is um, active in the model as the total debt, maximum debt that can be raised. And there is not much you can do in terms of sculpting, right? Mortgage style of debt repayment will not work. Here we have a minimum of 1.28, so it requires some sculpting. Equal uh, principal payment for sure is not going to work in the early days. We will start with a 1.14. So the best is to use the minimum uh, sculpted profile, sculpting the principal repayment based on you know, minimum of 1.3 throughout the debt life. Okay, so there is not much room to sculpt in this scenario. Uh, now let's look at another case where we have a basically a riskier project. So we have a higher tariff because the sponsors, when they negotiated the tariff, they are asking for a higher tariff to get a higher rate of return. Uh, the debt will be also more expensive because uh, it's country risk and you add the country risk to it. So the debt will become more expensive as well. So now given these uh, different, you know, cash profile, it's still flat. However, it is higher in terms of cash. We have more cash. So now when I want to size my debt, given this cash flow profile, now with the minimum DSCR of 1.3 limits, I can raise up to 7.8 million of debt. However, what is limiting this time is going to be the maximum debt to capital ratio of 7.5. So this time is the 7.5 that goes into the model as the maximum debt sizing. So now let's see that, okay, now I sized, uh, sized my debt based on the limit of, uh, uh, debt to capital ratio of 75%. Now let's see how we can, you know, repay the debts. Repaying the debt, given this cash flow profile, we can go with the mortgage style. This will give us a minimum of 1.34 with an average of 1.35. So that's already a good profile for the repayment. Lenders will agree with it. They will like it. It's kind of like a, you know, a flat DSCR. However, we can slightly, and you know, as you can see here with the mortgage style, let me just record that. With the mortgage style, I have an IRR of 15.63%. Um, Let's see if we can slightly improve it by sculpting it. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my uh, minimum DSCR. And as you can see here, the limit of 1.3 throughout, if I want to limit 1.3 throughout, I'm going to be repaying my debt too early. Okay. So what I can do is to start maybe with a higher DSCR in the beginning and slowly take it down to 1.3. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come here and I'm going to basically increase my starting DSCR target ratio and see if I can benefit. So you see that now I have a minimum of 1.31 and an average of 1.35 and my IRR is 15.67. So a slight increase. Let's see if we can even take it a little bit further. So you see that uh, starting with 1.4 becomes too aggressive. So the best I could do was to, you know, target a minimum DSCR of 1.3 However, gradually decreasing it from 1.39 then to up for, up uh, up to 1.31 and have a, a slight increase in my return in this case. Okay. Now let's go back to our uh, uh, 
a base case scenario and see now if I change something. So I'm no longer dealing with a project with a flat cash flow, but let's introduce some seasonality in our cash flow. Okay. When you apply your seasonality, you see that given the cash flow profile that you have, the mortgage style will no longer work for your project. So now that's when, you know, sculpting becomes interesting. Okay. So you see that you have to sculpt in this case and you have to find the optimized sculpting curve. Okay. And optimized can mean many things. Optimization should be both for sponsors and lenders. So you need to come up with a profile that is suitable both for lenders and, and also it can maximize the return of sponsors. So in this case, I have, um, you know, I'm starting with a 15.07, but I see that, you know, I have room maybe to sculpt this, this, um, further. Let's just go and, uh, do our same, you know, exercise of increasing and sculpting the debt. And you see that that's, you went further. So you can slightly improve the IRR by you know, sculpting the debt instead of having that flat 1.3 throughout the project lifetime, you can sculpt it further and benefit from sculpting in terms of your equity IRR. And of course, you need to test these profiles with the lenders and see whether they are okay with this profile and they have different metrics like average loan life, LLCR, and all the benchmarks that they use to make sure that the profile is acceptable to lenders. This was, you know, this is done with a very simple mechanics for a one tranche. If you have one tranche of senior loan, then sculpting it is uh, not easy, but it's doable. Uh, you will still have in a real model, you will still have problems with circular reference that you need to, you know, deal with. And every time that you want to sculpt, you need to run some copy and paste macro, which is going to slow down, you know, this process of generating this sculpted profile for you. And uh, the exercise will become even more difficult or more complex once you introduce two tranches of debts. Then, you know, the mechanics will become a little bit more difficult and uh, if you're interested, I can address it in another video. But that was it for this. I'm going to most probably upload this one pager sheet on my Eloquence channel. You can go and check out the mechanics of how to sculpt the debt and how to add these flexibilities into your own project finance models. Thank you and bye.